What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to be walking you through all my everyday cycling gear for 2022. Let's get straight into it, starting on the body, top of the head, helmet choices. Uh, I'm using this year, similar for the last two years, is the Bell Z20. Both of these have MIPS. I've got the vented version and the aero version. Pretty much all the time I'll choose to run the vented version. Anything 16 degrees and above, I will probably choose the vented version just for the increased airflow. Um, and just, yeah, with the, with the understanding of the physiology I have related to exercise in the heat, I just prefer to err on the side of caution and always have uh, maximal airflow. So for most of the time, I'm choosing the, the Z20 regular version. The MIPS is a nice, uh, nice add-on, just extra bit of safety. I've never actually crashed too bad in these, so uh, thankfully. Um, so I've never had to test that out, but it is nice peace of mind. The aero version I will use in time trials or very cold road races. I've also got the GoPro quick release mount on here. So if I'm filming a video and I wanna have the camera attached, uh, I'll use this one. This is just an adhesive mount actually just sticks on. Um, yeah, so this, this uh, aero version hasn't got too much use. Most of the time I'm going with the vented version. Just below the helmet, we got sunglasses. These are the sunglasses I'm using this year, but let me talk you through it. So these are the, the official Nero Continental team sunglasses, are the Oakley Sutra Lights. This is what most of the guys wear. These are the ones I wore every day in 2021. It's the, the Sutra Lights with the fluoro yellow uh, frame, blue upper frame, and then the Prism Road lenses. These were, these were really good sunglasses, but I found actually they were a bit dark. Um, for some reason, I prefer riding with a lot of light coming in. I like a lighter sort of frame. Like I'd almost be happy wearing no sunglasses if it didn't, you know, didn't have dirt sticking in my eyes. So these were the um, team sunglasses in 2020, Nero Continental 2020. These are the Oakley Jawbreakers in the splatter. Reason I like these is the lighter lenses. These aren't as dark. So these are the 24K Iridium lenses, which I don't think they sell anymore. I think they've relabeled this sort of gold lighter style lens is now called, I think it's 24K Prism. And I really like these. It, it just doesn't make things as dark. Uh, probably not as good for seeing in detail in terms of in the shadows, but just going out for a ride for these, it kind of gives everything this yellowish goldy tint, which I really like. Um, especially if you're riding early in the morning or later in the evening and you're in that sort of transition period between very bright in the day and then darker at night. These are really good. So these are the ones, as you've probably seen in some of my videos, I'm running, going back to the Jawbreakers from 2020. Nothing against these. Most of the guys prefer these darker lenses. Just, I know like Jay Vine also prefers the lighter lenses uh, and I'm in the same boat too. So the, these will be my main sunglasses for 2022. They also match the kit really well, which is a plus. I just like the look of them too. Also on the body is my heart rate strap. I've moved to a Polar H10 heart rate strap. Um, I've got a bit of a history with heart rate monitors. I always found the Wahoo ones were really accurate and worked really well, but I just found the, the actual pods, the attachment between the band and the pods um, corroded very quickly. So I, it was annoying me having to buy a new one every year. So I've, I've moved to the Polar H10. This is actually scientifically is probably more accurate. It's probably the most accurate heart rate monitor on the market. If they're doing uh, research studies on athletes doing in the field heart rate monitoring, um, not involving sort of ECG leads or anything like that. This is the go-to heart rate strap they use, the Polar H10. So in terms of accuracy, it's really good. Um, one big annoyance with this is that I found the battery kept running out and it turns out uh, when you store this, so when you're not wearing it, you're supposed to take this pod off. So if you're get, when you get back from a ride, you're supposed to unseparate the pod from the strap because it, when this is connected, this is constantly broadcasting via Bluetooth. So Keep that in mind if you get this, it is very good, but it's kind of annoying having to take that pod off and then you're risking, there's always in the back of my mind, I'm thinking I'm one day I'm gonna lose this pod. Uh, so keep that in mind, but overall I've been quite happy with the Polar H10. I do feel like it's gonna last longer than the Wahoo one because there's less um, things that could get corroded. So far, so good with the Polar H10. Couple more electronic things, headphones of choice is the Jaybird Terra Pro. Very premium, pretty expensive headphones. I've done quite, uh, I've done a whole review video on these if you want to check them out. Really good battery life, great um, uh, reduction in wind noise in the ears. Uh, the way these attach in the ears 
and block the sound of the wind is really good. Um, sticking with these again for 2022, they're starting to see some signs of wear. The, the um, rubber over these buttons is starting to peel off, but I've given these a really, uh, they've had a tough life. I've used them nearly every day. So, so far, these are really good, nice braided cable too. Really good set of headphones. I'll be running these in 2022. Other main electronic to record all the rides I'm doing is the Wahoo Element Bolt. This is the original version. This is from like years and years ago. I still find this is the best device. Even I've ridden um, side by side with Chris Miller and he's had the updated Element Bolt with the color screen and it is slow to update. Like when you press the menu button on the new one, it's really slow. When you go to the map as well, like zooming in and out and having the map update as you ride around, it's really slow. So I've, I actually, there's, I don't see any reason for me to upgrade to the newer version of the Bolt. I'm very happy with this unit. And yeah, I'll be running this in 2022 very happily. Brilliant product. Sticking with electronics, this time moving to on the bike electronics, we have lights. I'm pretty obsessive with lights. Um, I've tested a lot and gone through a lot trying to find the best ones and these are the ones I'm really happy with. So let me take you through them. Rear is this Magic Shine. I can't remember the model name, I'll put it in text. Um, but this is very bright. Couple of reasons I like this. Be Firstly, it's got the angle on the mount. So you know sometimes when you attach a light to your mount and then it's just pointing down at the rear wheel because it goes on the angle of the seat post. This has a nice angled mount, which means it's always pointing directly backwards horizontal to the road. It's also like just, it's just well made. Um, so this is a, actually like almost like a mini Garmin uh, quarter turn thing. So you can leave this mount on the bike and then when you go to ride, you just clip it in. It is very bright, um, really good. I, I put that on, it's probably too bright. Um, very bright, very good battery life. Um, excellent rear light. I feel very safe when I'm running this. So that's my go-to rear light, take it on and off. Brilliant product. Other Magic Shine, actually, I'll, that's a very, I'll get onto this. Front light, I've been using this for ages, is a Lazine Light Drive 700 XL with the GoPro um, adapter on it. So this just clips on, on my Vision Metron bars, I've got the Wahoo mount with the GoPro underneath. So this just bangs on under the Wahoo, super simple, very bright. Um, you, I use this on flashing mode sometimes. Um, I could almost use this as, an, as, I pretty much use this for every ride, like it's very bright. It's, it's not just a be seen light, it's a to see light. So it's very bright, does a good job. Um, really happy with this. So those two together is enough to get you through pretty much any, the, the dark, like day, really good daytime lights, but these are also good like in the dark to illuminate you. But I do have another Magic Shine light. And this uh, is a separate, this is a battery pack and then the actual light here. This is like, like a this, I think this is a mountain biking light. I'll put the model below. Um, but I use this for a bunch ride we do in, in Sydney. It's called The Chop in Centennial Park. And in winter, it starts at 5.30 p.m., meaning you're starting in the dark and you're, we're going around Centennial Park where there's no street light. So you need something to fully illuminate the entire road and the trees in front of you. Um, the Lazine doesn't really cut it. I mean, it's okay, but just to be safe, I like to almost ha be like, have like a car headlight. And that's what this is. I won't turn, plug it in and turn it on because it's so bright. But this is an excellent sort of mountain biking or country road light. Um, yeah, I use this for the chop. So that's my sort of backup option if I need it in the dark. Final electronic product, which I'm not going to take off the bike because they're already on there now, is the pedals. It's the Fivero. Asio Majuvos, I've got them on the road bike, on the gravel bike. I got these at the start of 2020, so these are going on to their third year now. Still reading flawlessly, brilliant product. I've done two bearing, uh, actually I've done one bearing replacement in the set I use on the road, and I've done two bearing replacements on the set I have on the gravel bike. It's total time, it's probably 10 minutes from start to finish to have the pedals off, bearings replaced, and pedals back on. So keep in mind you will have to do a bearing replacement it feels like once every eight to 10 months, um, which I'm quite happy to do for the, for the transferability and the um, flexibility they give. I really think they're good. So this set, I've bashed them in pedals and same set, third year. I have no doubts they're gonna get me through the year well. So for Favera very, for very Asioma Duos, I'm running again for 2022 for my power meter. Sticking with the bike, this is the saddlebag I'm using. It's the Lazine Road Caddy. 
I've had this for probably five years, like a very long time, and it's still going really strong. And as you can see, like it is stuffed with bits. Um, and it, the zipper's still fine, it's really good. Let me open this up and show you the spares I take on with me on every ride because I'm using tubeless tires. So, this is what gets me through a ride. I have one spare tube, which is still in the, in the packet. I pr will probably never use that. Two tire levers to take the tire off in, in an emergency. Again, I haven't used these since I went tubeless, so I could almost take the, I could probably take the tube and the, and the um, tire levers out. These are the main things uh, that I'm gonna need though. So two CO2s obviously to inflate the tire and the regulator. But this is the Dynaplug uh, pill, mad, pill thing. Um, I'll show you what's in this. So if I get a flat, I get this thing which has this little dart in it, which is one of these. It's basically a little bullet head and then a piece of rubber behind it to plug the hole. So you basically push this through the tire pull it back out, that leaves this little thing, this little bit sits in the tire, and then there'll be this hanging out of the tire. It comes with then this little knife, which you can use to trim off the edge, and then you just blast it with a CO2, and, and that's it, seals the tire. Now sometimes you might need two, sometimes if it's a big cut, you might need two or three of these to go into the tire. Um, but yeah, this works really well. I've never had that not seal actually, so I've always been able to seal my flats with this. Actually, looking at this now, I've only got oh no, I got three. So I've got I've got three of these things in here, which means pretty much any flat I get out on a ride, I'll be able to seal. And then yeah, give it a blast with CO two, and and you're off, good to go, ride home. So that's the Dyna plug pill thing. I I'm never going to use these really. If it gets so bad that I can't plug it with the Dyna plug and the CO two is like I'm going to get an Uber or something. So I could probably take that take them out. And just run the and just run this if I wanted really. Um, that is my saddlebag. Okay, last one for the bike is the saddle. That is a Cell Italia Novus Boost. It's a combination between a road saddle and a time trial saddle. I've been running that for a few years. Um, I've reviewed it in some of my other videos. But yeah, really good saddle, very comfortable. It weighs a ton though, so I've got this on the gravel bike and the road bike, but it's the version with the alloy rails. I should probably upgrade to the carbon version because it's uh, quite heavy. But yeah, doing me doing me well. If you find some of the other saddles, some of the things like the Pro Stealth, um, I find is too wide for me. I don't like how wide it is at the front of the saddle. And for the Specialized Power Saddle, which is one of the other most popular ones, I find the, the, the aggressiveness of which it angles in towards the tip means that it's difficult to find the zone that you want to sit on. Whereas the Cell Italia has this channel at the front which is the right width for me so it gives me a lot of places to sit um, and get comfortable on so really happy with that saddle be running that again in 2022 another big one i'm on gloves glove choice now this is my summer ones if if i'm doing this video in winter i have some other winter gloves i use but this is just the summer ones i use so three ones here for, for an everyday ride these are juro just standard gloves um, i use these to keep my raffle ones nice and fresh but these have very minimal padding, um, very flat. There's almost I don't, I don't like ones that have these big gel pads. I find they get in the way. So these Juro ones are quite good. Um, I like to keep because this. If I'm wearing sunscreen as well, I like to wear gloves to stop the back of my hands getting burnt, um, and also for safety as well. If I do happen to crash, um, I make my money on the laptop typing. I don't want to rip up my hands. So uh, yeah, Juro gloves for everyday riding. Then I've got the lovely. Rafa protein mitts for racing. Um, you'll see me, I use these in races. Again, these have very minimal padding on the palm. Actually, there's no padding. It's basically just a piece of thicker sort of material there to protect the palm and nothing to interrupt the, the feeling between your hands and the hoods. So really nice gloves, but I don't wear these every day because I don't want to wear them out. I only wear them in races. Final pair, why do I have a pair of full finger mountain bike gloves? I use these for my key target races if they're crits. Not necessarily for more protection, but for the confidence it gives me. Trust me, if you find in crits you're a bit nervous with your cornering and you don't have full confidence, have a go wearing full finger gloves. I, I don't know what it is, but starting a crit with full finger gloves on, I will corner faster, 100%. It just gives, it's just that little extra bit of confidence 
and the feeling of having full protection in your hands does wonders for me. So I won't use them like in an everyday crit, but if I've got, uh, like in a few months time, I think we've got the, the New South Wales Criterium Championships coming up. I will wear these full finger gloves. The grip and the confidence they give is really, it's crazy. Um, definitely try it out if you're having issues in crits. So I love um, the full finger gloves for important races if I'm a bit nervous. Next up are my shoe choice. Sticking again for 2022 on the Rafa Pro Team shoes, white and orange. I feel like I just constantly go on about how good these shoes are, but they really are incredible. I'm very happy to be using these again next year. I'm not gonna go through all the various bits of kit I have. I've done another video on that. But yeah, these shoes I just wanted to point out again because absolutely no changes for this year. Um, they're so comfortable, very stiff, and really, really excellent. So happy to run these again. Uh, as you can see, they're still in pretty good nick, actually. Um, doing pretty well. I wear the orange ones much more often, so the white ones are in a bit better condition. But so far, they still look pretty good, given I you know, gave them a pretty good thrashing last year. So this is the Pro Team shoes I'll be running for 2022. All right, that pretty much covers it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one.